generation. We are a chosen generation called for to show His excellence. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. We are a chosen generation. We are a chosen generation called for to show His excellence. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. Say, Spirit, break out, break down these walls. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to be here one more day.
because you are worthy God you are worthy come down in this place Lord fill it bring us a revival God cause your people to cry out to you because we need thee every hour every minute we need to the moment of celebrating our commitments to one another and to speak about giving. And I'd like to say three things this morning. Let me check in the room if there's somebody visiting us for the first time. I always like to do that when we talk about money. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of, this is the day you chose, and we're really excited that you chose to visit us today. Um, and it's like, you know, we just want to clear for you that we don't talk about money every week. I just need to clear that up with the person that's visiting us, because that sometimes is often the case. So is it John? We don't do this every week, but we do take an offering, John. So, <laughs> and, it's good. <laughs> okay. and it's good to have you with us. So a couple of things that I want to speak about this morning when it comes to giving. First of all, is giving really calls us to have a look at our context and to choose rich generosity? So we have a look at this particular passage, and Paul is speaking to the church in the Macedonian region. And he's speaking at a time when Claudius was the emperor. And we mustn't forget the, the circumstances in which the church was experiencing life. Because sometimes we, you know, with all due respect, life and the way we live life relates directly to the way we experience faith and where our faith is. 
And so often when we read scripture, we don't spend enough time reflecting, well, what was going on for the people that were initially receiving this letter? They were in a place of famine. They had extreme, extreme poverty among them. The, the Christian church was being desperately attacked from within and without. The, people were not sure of what they believed. There were political oppressions of the day. There were financial difficulties. There was a lack of food and resources and famine. And in many respects, we can identify with all of those. The church is experiencing many challenges at the moment. There are political uncertainties. There are parts of our world and even of this country where there is desperate poverty. And so we speak into contexts that are not dissimilar to our own. And so Paul begins to speak to a church and celebrates their generosity amongst times of incredible testing. And so whenever we come to the moments of giving, we are really called by God to examine ourselves. As a church, we have gone through a season globally of extreme testing. During the COVID pandemic, the church globally has been through incredible challenges and difficulties. This is something that we must not be afraid of, but something that God will use for the kingdom's sake. We either believe that as people of faith or we are defeated by that. And whenever we read the scripture, it says that the gates of hell never prevail against the church. For we are a people of faith. We also realize often that finances are the temperature of our spirituality. When I heard that preached when I was in seminary, I wondered what that was all about. 25 years in ministry, I know what that is all about. I, I, I bring you greetings from our church in South Africa that at times the church is really pressed. I've said enough with the finance committee in this church to discover that that is the same story here. That we are pressed financially. But I think that there is something in the financial pressing that calls us out of our own dependence to the dependency of God. And so our commitment to giving is really about examining for this generation, for these people, for this season, God, you have called us to be a church. And we pray that the temperature of our church would be one of rich generosity. What does rich generosity look like? Does rich generosity speak about bank balances that have nine zeros behind them? or six zeros behind them, or is a rich generosity the spirit that exists in the people that worship? And I believe that a rich generosity is the spirit that exists in the people. So if you've spent any time here over the last month during our stewardship month, you would have done a couple of things. You would have landed in the patch at some point, okay? And you would have met Charlie who insists that my shift begins at five and finishes at eight every evening. And, e and every evening I think that I'm going to say to him, well, I might not be here tomorrow night. And he says, I'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs> I have, I mean, I I've been doing a little bit of time with Gretchen and Mark, and I feel like he's got a whip that he, you know, so I, I dare and say no to him. But the thing that you discover about Charlie as he leads, as he's on the patch for 31 days, other than a spell of COVID, is that he begins early in the morning and he is the last to leave. He displays rich generosity. He doesn't even, he's not even part of our community and yet he's at the center of our community because he embodies the very essence of our community. And so he, sp he speaks and he lives a rich generosity. So, so rich generosity is really what's in the heart of people. We experience rich generosity when we near people that are generous. And, and we have seen over the last couple of weeks a generosity that is spilt in this place. Yesterday, 
I had the famous privilege of watching Lucy make her cinnamon rolls. <laughs> like, so apart from like watching the dough, watching the folding, I actually had, um, Dawn, I don't think you know this, but your little granddaughter, Chloe, came into the kitchen about three or four times, <laughs> making sure that we were going to allow her to test these spectacular cinnamon rolls when they came. She kept on wanting to make sure they came out of the oven. So, Lucy, it was a privilege watching you deal with the dough, roll out the dough, generously, let me tell you, generously putting in those toppings, rolling it and cooking it, and then let me tell you, I wish I can say I only ate one. <laughs> But in the midst of watching Lucy and little Chloe come in, there was a display of rich generosity. You are either generous or not. I mean, it's that simple. We are either generous or we are mean. We are either generous or we live from a place of scarce, scarcity. Now, what I find interesting about this particular passage is that it's not about, it's not, this is not a, a preaching on giving to the church, because ultimately today is about giving financially to the church. It is not giving so that we can get money out of you that makes you feel guilty, because that's really not what this passage does. This passage speaks very clearly to the equality of our giving, to the attitude of our giving. But it does speak very clearly about giving financially to the kingdom of God. And so it says that we, do not, we, we cannot rely on one sector of the church giving so much so that they actually become depleted financially. It says that very clearly. So if, if, if we have to rely on a few people giving, they will become depleted. So it's not about equal amounts, but it is about equal generosity. And so we give what every one of us are called to give. And so we give from a place where it feels generous to God. Giving generously is not about a, a teaching of finances that really is supposed to evoke in us guilt. Now you've all heard preached the, the sermon about if you bought a coffee latte from one of the latte places, you'll pay about $5, I reckon. And if you add those $5 over seven days or five days, and then you add those over a month, and, then, and if you add those over a year, you know, some people say you'll get about $1,000 a year. Okay, maybe, give or take. You know, do you give more or less to God? Okay, that's, you've heard those sermons preached. But ultimately, really, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to measure our giving before God. You and I are supposed to measure what we give to God. It is between you and God. It is about living with a generous spirit. And it is about choosing to give in a way that everyone around us is, is brought into the celebration of what we give. Generous living means that people who do not have get to be blessed. We are really called, when the church is ultimately the presence of Christ, it is a place of generosity and not a space of scarcity. Because ultimately, if we are called to be generous with ourselves and with others, it really speaks about the way we understand grace. So when we come to giving, our giving is supposed to ignite the work of grace in our lives. Let me speak about that for a few moments. Our giving really and the way we give speaks about the way we understand who God is. During our stewardship campaign, we've, we've led some invitation to prayer. Now, in terms of our prayer journey, we've had a, a season of dynamic dynamite prayer. And if you've been part of that, many of you have placed prayers before God. And ultimately, that prayer journey is about God being in control. Glory has been able to order us a beautiful prayer journal. 
And what we are going to be doing as a church is we're going to be having that prayer journal, the prayers of God's people staying right here near the altar, allowing us to write our prayers together and then celebrate what God has done together. Part of what our campaign was called during stewardship is this is who we are. When we speak about money, it speaks about our collective giving. And so are we a people, not just of generosity, but are we a people of grace? Because stewardship is really about grace. Stewardship it really helps us understand whether or not we believe the earth and all that is in the earth belongs to the Lord or not. It's really about who is in control. If I invited you all to bring your bank balances up and to show one another, I think that we'd probably empty the church in about 35 <laughs> seconds. You know, it's, it's a strange thing. But ultimately, there, there, there is a moment where part of our discipline and our being together is stewarding what God has given us. And you and I make an accountable prayer before God. As part of the discipline of the Methodist churches, we, we have a long tradition. You know, I've been, I must be honest, in my preparation for today, I've, I've reflected quite a bit on my journey in South Africa. Because it's strange how at times the church is exactly the same. It is no different on the continent of Africa to the continent that we live on right now. Our stewardship is the same. We are all called to give. And so as we give, we are reminded, and John Wesley helped us with this. John Wesley said something quite phenomenal. He said, we are called to earn as much as we can. We are called to save as much as we can. And then we are called to give as much as we can. From 1731 to 1791, John Wesley lived on 28 pounds a month. His salary started at 30 pounds and ended at 1,400 pounds. But he still lived on 28 pounds. And so he lived a life of discipleship and discipline. And we see that at the heart of his spiritual revival is stewardship. Stewardship and stewarding our gifts, our time, our talent, and our treasure is at the heart of revival. Michael prayed for that today, that God would bring about revival in the church. And giving is at the heart of revival. And so we are called, as the people of God, to examine our giving. To come before God, to earn as much as we can, to save as much as we can, and to give as much as we can. The truth is, the discipline of Christians is really to a simplified living so others can simply live. We are called into a relationship with one another. The one place that we all exist together is in the balance sheet of this church. It's the one place that we really found our accountable relationships with each other. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to share with you the full budget for 2023 We'll be able to give you an indication of what the pledge giving has been in the life of this church. And we'll be able to discern together what we believe God is calling us to be in the future. Let me tell you, one of the most uncomfortable subjects to discuss is money. But it is the subject that we are called as the people of God to hold accountable to one another. And so part of our journey is really a journey of commitment. Over the last couple of weeks, we have been sending communication to you about your commitment and your pledge to the life of this church. And it is a truly an incredible gift to see the faithful giving that has been given in the life of this church. 
And over the next three Sundays, we will have, and some of you have already handed your pledge cards in, we will have a pledge card available, it's really simple, for you to fill in and be able to return it for us so that we can discern together how it is that we are to be as a church in the next year. But ultimately, we do that because we are a people that chooses grace first. We're a people that holds our giving commitment together. And finally, we are called to give so that abundance can be released among us. Either we believe or we don't believe that God will meet our needs. You know, it's the one place that we, that, that we are called by Scripture to test God in. We either choose to believe that God will supply all our needs or God won't. God really calls you and I to imitate the gift of Christ by giving of our time, our talents, and our treasure. We know that Jesus gave his life for you and for me. And he calls us to give of ourselves to one another and to this world. Some of it is in our incredible talents. In a little while, we're going to walk out of the church and you are going to see talented gifts all over. I, it, is, it was magnificent yesterday just being part of the crafts show. You, you, you have seen commitments that people have made to, to share their time and offer their ministry. Over the last couple of weeks, we've had a ministry exhibition. And we give our time, we give our talents, but we also give our treasure. And giving our treasure is really between you and God. And so I'm going to invite you now into a prayer with me as, as we really discern together what it is that God is calling you to give in the extension of his kingdom. Let us pray together. Lord God, we recognize that from generation to generation, you have called the church to places of generosity and accountability. We recognize, Lord God, that as the church, we are the people of God gathered together. But as New Horizon, we have a budget and we have a ministry before you. And as a collective people, together, each one of the gifts that is received in the offering plate online is used for the kingdom of heaven on earth. We do not take that lightly, Lord. We recognize now that for more than 40 years, there have been people that have generously given so that the kingdom of God can become a shining light to the nations in this place. We pray for ourselves now. Those of us that are discerning what to give, those of us that have already decided what to give, those of us here in the sanctuary and those of us online. We pray, God, that in our journey of giving, that you would convict us what to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.